Welcome to week three, day two of our e-learning lessons. Our essential questions for today, how does the author support the idea that training service or guide dogs takes time and hard work? How can I go back in the text to support my evidence? We have a 10 minute 33 second video about meet the puppies to be service dogs. As you get a chance, pay close attention to what's happening in the video about service dogs, how they're being trained, what does it take to make a dog to become a service, service dog or a guide dog. These elite dogs are the product of months of schooling, and not all puppies that begin training have what it takes to become a service dog. If a pup doesn't live up to the strict standards required, they will fail out. Which puppies have the brains and behavior to make it through the rigors of training? We find out in Puppy Prep. On the California coastline, about halfway between Los Angeles and San Francisco, sits Arroyo Grande, a small community of beaches, mountains, and wineries. Just outside of town is Doggy Do Good, a training and obedience school specializing in the education of service dogs. Depending on the dog, the journey from carefree puppy to hero can take anywhere from six months to more than a year. Not all dogs make it through the process. If a dog flunks out, it's put up for adoption. At any given time, there are dozens of service dogs in training at Doggy Do Good. The abilities they learn range from retrieval to stability, pressure therapy, medical alerts, simply kisses, and much more. What they learn depends upon what each individual dog is predisposed to. For instance, Yellow Lab Deacon specializes in retrieval and stability. Good, steady. At almost two years old, he's older than many of the dogs that have already graduated. He was a stubborn pup, and though he had come close to flunking out, he is now only weeks from potential graduation. Still, he can't coast. Until the minute before graduating, trainers are watching the dogs for any sign that they won't be able to cut it. Right now, Deacon and his classmates are working on basic cum drills. The pups run around the lawn and play, and one by one, the trainers call out to them. Hi, come, good girl. Good come, Kai. Cooper, come. The most important thing a dog needs to learn is the difference between playtime and work time. While it's all right for the dogs to act like puppies, as soon as the trainer calls them, they need to snap into work mode. These drills help solidify that skill. For a veteran like Deacon, this is simple. If Deacon is a senior in Service Dog High, one of the incoming freshmen is Kaya, an eight-month-old golden retriever. Kaya is beautiful, and I love her. If she fails out of school during training, I will be trying to adopt her. And right off the bat, she's having a problem. See, Kaya enjoys the company of people over other dogs. While it's good to be comfortable around people, she can't remain nervous around other dogs if she's going to pass training. Kaya's half-sister, Remy, is also starting class. Though they share a dad and are almost the same age, Remy has a completely different personality. Remy loves to play with other dogs and often tries to pull her half-sister out of her doggy shell. 
for the especially young pups. Like six-month-old Chocolate Lab Benelli, learning the come command begins on a long leash. A trainer calls Benelli and gives a gentle tug. This one little pull is all the puppy needs to come the rest of the way. Until she recognizes the command, the leash helps Benelli understand what the English-speaking humans are trying to communicate to her doggy ears. So far, she's doing an all right. Cleo, stop getting everyone into trouble. Keep it up, Benelli, and you'll be off that leash in no time. After this morning exercise, it's time to try something more subdued. Most of a service dog's time isn't spent running around or actively working. Instead, being calm and on call, ready at a moment's notice to help. The puppies must lay down and not get distracted for long stretches of time. Trainers toss toys around to make sure the dogs will choose their jobs over pure playtime. Whenever a dog breaks from their downstay, it isn't enough for the dog to simply lay back down. The trainer needs to take the dog back to the position where they were, otherwise a puppy won't understand the gravity of getting up. If a dog is always distracted and can't learn to focus, that's the quickest way to fail puppy prep. Kaya's brother Luke is late to class. He spent the morning off-site with a trainer, and without having had the morning to run around like the rest of his classmates, Luke may be too bored to sit still. Benelli, all you have to do is literally stay still. If Benelli can't stay when the ball is tossed over her head, she may become too distracted when taken out in public. Remy, come on. You pups just need to relax. These two have just started, so their behavior isn't a huge problem yet. Kaya, however, is just as new and already a pro at downstay. That's why you're my favorite. With most of the dogs being unfazed by the toys, it's time for some livelier distractions. Good day, guys. Oh my God, it's Mr. Pip. <laughs> Mr. Pip is, beyond being absolutely undeniable, also a service dog in training. Smaller dogs can comfort people with anxiety, as well as help alert people with diseases like diabetes when they need to take their medicine. Now, however, his only job is to distract his classmates. Most of the dogs don't fall for the enchanting dance of Mr. Pip, except for Tank the German Shepherd. One thing that Tank needs to work on is his prey drive. Small animals like cats and Mr. Pip can distract larger dogs when they're with their feature owners. Tank must fight his most basic instincts in order to pass puppy prep. As for Mr. Pip, he isn't scared. He has a job to do, and he performs it admirably. God bless you, Mr. Pip. Girl, By the end of the downstay lesson, yeah. it looks like everyone's made progress. Down. But there's one more test. Mercy. A Malinois with almost unlimited energy, Mercy belongs to Sandy, the owner of Doggy Do Good. Immaculately schooled, Mercy acts as a four-legged trainer, squeaking the toy just as the people trainers would. Mercy's claimed a victim. With only a month from his planned graduation, Deacon should know better than to break from downstay. If he continues to lose focus, he may have to stay in school for extra months. Or worse, flunk out. As for the other dogs, they've taken their lessons well. For most, it's still early in their service dog training. As long as they can keep making progress, the puppies show good promise of graduating. Kaya, in particular, shows a lot of potential, especially for her young age and upbringing. Unlike her brother, Luke, who was raised since birth by trainers at Doggy Do Good, Kaya went off to a puppy raiser family. Many of the dogs at Doggy Do Good live with a foster family for the first few months of their life. There, they learn the most basic behaviors, like potty training. When pups reach six to eight months, they return to Doggy Do Good to begin service dog school. Kaya's family dropped her off a few weeks ago, and she's seen them only once since. Today, however, they're back for a visit. When trainer Paul brings Kaya outside, she thinks she's going for a walk. What she doesn't know is that the family that raised her is waiting around the corner. Kaya. Kaya. Kaya, come. 
During their training, it's easy to forget how young the dogs are. When allowed to roll around with her former family, Kaya is all puppy. Even if foster father Ray wants to make sure she still behaves. Leave it. Puppy raisers are a crucial part of the service dog process, and often one of the bottlenecks to training service dogs. Newborn puppies need near constant attention to learn the basics of obedience. Good girl. And while it's fun for the family to raise a puppy, Knowing they have to say goodbye in a few short months can be difficult. Kaya's family is proud of the job she'll someday have. And while they still miss Kaya, the family thinks that soon they'll be ready to take another puppy to help begin its journey to becoming a service dog. At the end of the day, the good boys and good girls at Doggy Do Good have taken another step toward becoming fully trained service dogs. But tomorrow is another day filled with new challenges and distractions that could ruin a dog's career. Which puppies have what it takes? Mr. Pip! <laughs>
If you can access your video games, you can use them. If you can access the TV, you can use it. If you can access your rollerblades, your tennis shoes, that means you can use them. If you can access your toys, that means you can use them. But the part of wheelchair access symbol. If we think about the symbol that we've seen on anything that means handicap or handicap accessible, what does that mean? If we know that the word access means people can use it, there may be people that cannot read, but they can understand a symbol. Another part, also, there may be people that cannot understand English. So a symbol is easier to recognize. So if we're looking at some details for number two, what does access mean in wheelchair access symbol? Why might the symbol be better than words? The word access means that people can use it. There can be people that cannot read, but can understand a symbol. Also, there may be people that cannot understand English, so a symbol is easier to recognize. As we're looking at the rest of our assignment that we're gonna do as a group today, then the rest of the work will be for you to complete on your own. Number three says, what does distracted mean? Why must service dogs learn not to be distracted? First, we have to look at the meaning of distracted. So I'm going to start by saying distracted means. If you think about the video, if you think about the story, we saw that the dogs in the video were supposed to stay down and you had Mr. Pip and then you had the bigger dog Tank to come in. And then when these, or excuse me, Mercy come in, and when they came into the video, their job was to distract the dogs if they could, to get them to lose their attention. If you think about it in the story we're reading, in the classroom, she brought the dog in with all the students to see if the dog can keep its attention where it needs to be and not be distracted with all the kids and the things going on. So distracted means to lose your focus or attention on something. So to distract means to lose your focus or attention on something. But now we've got to finish up the second part. Why must service dogs learn not to be distracted? Service dogs must lead and focus on their owner. If they lose or if they get distracted, they may lead their owners into danger. They must stay focused and keep their owners safe. So if we think about what's happening, if the service dog is out on the street walking the owner and they're walking down the sidewalk and the dog sees another dog and wants to go play with it and just takes off running across the street it could put himself in danger and the owner in danger by getting hit by moving cars, by any other thing that's coming, buses, trucks, anything, trains. So the dog has to be able to stay focused without losing its attention and do the job it's supposed to do. Keep the owner safe and make sure that everything is the way it should be. The rest of your assignment today, I'm gonna to ask you to please make sure you do questions four, five, and six that go with the right dog for the job Question four says, why do you think a classroom is a good place for Ira to learn skills? The second part of the question, give examples from the text. So give me two or more ways you can prove that the classroom is a good place for Ira to learn these skills. Question five, service dogs help people who have difficulty moving around or hearing, while guide dogs help people who are blind. Besides assisting with crossing a street, what are some other skills a guide dog might need to learn that a service dog would not? So think about the two, a service dog and a guide dog. Think about Ira from the story. 
She started as a service dog, and then she had to transition to becoming a guide dog. So think about some of the skills that are different between the two, and what are some of the skills that a guide dog might need to learn that a service dog would not. Question six. This is from our reading, The Right Dog from the Job. What is intelligent disobedience? Why does a guide dog need to learn intelligent disobedience? First thing, tell me what intelligent disobedience is. Second part of the question, why might this be important for the dog? Give me some text evidence. The next part of your learning, you're going to re read Beautiful Butterflies and Marvelous Moths by Guy Milarante. You're gonna read the short text and once you get done reading the text about these two insects, one's a butterfly, one's a moth, make sure you go back and answer the questions that go with it. Number one says, what is a proboscis? Explain what it is used for. So the first part, tell me what it is. Second part, tell me what it's used for. Question number two. In the text box, you can just type your answer. The question says, which set of animals is diurnal? A, moths, bats, and owls. B, butterflies, raccoons, and bats. C, moths, butterflies, and ladybugs. D, butterflies, honeybees, and squirrels. Question number three, you have two part or two answers you need to answer. You can just click right into the text box and type your answer. A butterfly is a blank in its pupa stage. A moth is a blank in its pupa stage. If you can't remember, please go back into the text and find the correct answer. Question number four, tell how moths and butterflies are different in the way they rest. So that's your focus. When they're resting, how is a moth and a butterfly different? Give me the specific answer from the text. Question five and six are your final two questions for the reading you did about the moths and the butterflies. How did the author organize this article? So in other words, what is the text structure? And we used to have this poster up in our classroom, went over it many, many times. We had like chronological order on it. We had com uh, compare and contrast on it. We had sequential order on it. There was quite a few things we had on that text structure anchor chart. So think about the moth and the butterfly. Is it A, he lists information in chronological order. B, he lists random facts about moths and butterflies. C, he groups facts about butterflies and moths in order of importance. D, he compares and contrasts moths and butterflies. Type your answer in the box that says answer. You can put it right there for it. Question number six. Reread the following sentence from the article. The bodies of butterflies are slender and smoother than the thicker and hairier moths. Choose the best definition for the underlined word slender. Is it A, thick, B, skinny, C, heavy, D, faster? You'll click your answer right here in box number two, or in the box for number six to put your answer. Day two exit ticket. You need to make sure you reread the text, the right dog for the job, so you can answer this question and give me text evidence. Why do you think Don is willing to take a long trip to attend Sandy's student's graduation? Support your answer with evidence from the text. First, you have to tell me why will Don make that long trip to come all the way to see her in Montana and the students and their eighth grade graduation? Then I need text evidence why. So give me specific evidence. Then your final part, make sure you do your ABC order with these 15 words. In the text box below, you can just type by starting with number one. 
And as you start with ABC order, you're going to think, are any words starting with A? Not in this list. Are any words starting with a B? We have the word blind. So blind will be our first word. Then you have number two. Any word starting with C? We have children, confidence, ceremony, and confess. Out of these, ceremony will come first because it has C-E. Yes, they all four start with the C, but now we've got to look at the second letter. E is the closest to begin the alphabet. Children will go next. And then after children, we have C-O-N-F and confidence, C-O-N-F and confess. But confess has the E, which would be next. So if you're working on your assignment for ABC order, you have the first five words already done for you. You need to make sure you finish up your assignments by doing all 15 words, and then make sure you do your Mayan assignment. There should be books assigned for April 6th through 10th about service, service dogs, police dogs, therapy dogs, and other kinds of dogs for you to read for your enjoyment. Make sure you also work on your iReady reading minutes and your iReady math minutes. And then finally, for your, your social studies, make sure you take time to click under your social studies link to make sure we're getting all social studies work completed and submitted back in for your weekly grade. Social studies is due on Friday. If you have questions with your lessons, please make sure you talk to your teachers. They will help you with your assignments. Thank you for participating in week three of day two of our e-learning lessons.